Okay, great. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, I think a lot of you are still muted. <laughs> there we go. Politeness. Now I think we can talk. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, this is the Hi. Amphibia uh, stream. Welcome, everybody. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Um, we're here with Matt Brawley, creator of the show, and uh, yeah, um, Brenda's song, Bill Farmer, Amanda, sorry, oh. Layton? Yes. Great. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and Justin Felbinger. Um, and I love your, uh, I love the, is that the, a cardboard cutout behind you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> um, welcome to, oh my gosh, yeah, I was looking at the chat while we were letting everyone in, and there's uh people all over the country but also like i saw australia and scotland and turkey and poland people are watching wow. this yeah, is amazing. Amazing. what time is it in australia <laughs> yeah yeah what time is it for anyone in australia or scotland or yeah, is it is it, it australia is it six hours ahead or like six hours behind or something like that? i have a friend who lives in um, on the gold coast three it's 3 a.m in turkey wow wow <laughs> It's thank you for showing Scotland. up yes yeah oh, midnight in scotland thank you. <laughs> 11 a.m in sydney australia wow this is really cool i don't i, don't, I know we've had a um, worldwide audience attendance before but this might be the most i've ever seen on the show oh, um, but uh yeah um uh we can hop right into it i guess matt you want <laughs> oh you dog <laughs> <laughs> um tell us a little bit about uh how you how you got Amphibia rolling and, um, you know, maybe how you pitched it or how you created it, how you came up with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you have like four hours, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll speak very frankly, cause I'd love to, I really would love to hear a lot from the voice talents on this sure. show. Just, we're so lucky to have them all four of them here together. Like it's, it's rare even for me to get to yeah. see them like this. I've, I've been missing them so much in quarantine. Like, you know, at least I would see them occasionally. At least maybe we might invite them to come to the office or something, but no such luck right now. In fact, like we have so many crew members that have unfortunately never met you guys. Um, so that's, that is a shame. But for me, me personally getting the show made, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty long, long process for me. It was about, you know, two years of kind of dreaming it up and developing it with Disney before we got greenlit. And we've been, you know, uh, I feel like working in production on it for like three or four years now. Um, but, you know, I think that it all started with a, a very loose pitch Bible that I started shopping around, getting out there, pitching the idea to people, you know what I mean? Like uh, seeing what would stick. Amphibia was actually the third thing that I pitched. Like that's something that I, I, I liked to share because I, I don't want anyone to think that it's like one and done, man. Like I, I had two like, you know, absolutely whiffs at bat. And like, that was cool. That was totally fine because I could, learn so much from each time and then on the third one there was a lot of interest and that was amphibia this this story about a, a 13 year old girl stuck in this crazy frog world but yeah and so we've been working on it ever since uh with these amazing actors and an amazing team and we're so happy to be here today that's awesome did you um you were at disney uh before and did you that's work right gravity falls or what yes you okay yeah yeah so I, I worked on gravity falls uh, uh for the full run i was a board artist in season one i was a uh director on season two and then after gravity falls ended i, I sort of ping-ponged around for a while doing sort of a little bit of development here a little bit of production work work there um i worked on you know uh big city greens as a director i worked on steven universe for a little bit i worked on billy dilly's subterranean adventure as a storyboard revisionist which was great you know what I mean? I, I did a, a freelance here and there on stuff, um, but my, my career really started at DreamWorks Feature. I, I, I got started on this film called Turbo, which was about racing snails. And it was yeah. so funny <laughs> because like, you know, I had been drawing snails for so long in a certain way that when we started working on Amphibia, I swore I would draw them differently, that they would be, they would be a little bit more like never ending story. You know what I mean? Like they would, they would have fronds and be kind of like, like kind of like, you know, shrimp or whatever. And so that really is where like Bessie's design came from is that I really didn't want to give her like big, like cartoony eyes on the top of those stalks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I remember, yeah, cause I was a tit mouse when the turbo TV show uh, was, uh, was, was around too. Um, so I remember, I remember those snails fondly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the TV uh, show was dope. Though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The animation was really cool. Um, yeah. But um, tell, uh, and everybody can jump in here. Like, tell me a little bit about what the casting for Amphibia was like. How did you yeah. cast everybody? 
So, um, you know, this is my first show. It's my first time working with the casting department at Disney. They're all super great. They were all super supportive. Like, you know, I, I don't know a lot of um, talent. I, I wasn't, you know, I, all I could do is listen. I, I listened to hundreds of auditions for each character. There's a crazy number for Sprig. Justin, would you believe uh, um, 1,600? I listened to 1,600 wow. sprigs, wow. which is wow. crazy. It's just, it's, it was insane. I remember counting them just because I was like, why not? You know what I mean? But I regretted it. Um, but really like, you know, what ended up happening was that the Disney casting department just started bringing me people and everyone was amazing. And at that point, the, the, the ball was a little bit in, in my court. You know what I mean? In terms of like the kind of voice I was after, the kind of personality that I wanted the character to have. And these, these four really, really helped me craft these characters in the sense that like without their voices, I really wouldn't have been able to work on them. I think each one of them was, was sort of an epiphany. I remember he hearing Bill Farmer for the first time and just really thinking to myself like, yeah, absolutely, that sticks. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it, it's right for the character. It, it matches what he looks like. And I remember that for, for all four of you and, and, and especially like Brenda when we started. Um, I just remember like you were so cool and chill you know what I mean you you had this great kind of confidence uh, and don't take this the wrong way there was a, a beautiful surface level confidence and a, a, a wonderful kind of depth under underneath you know what I mean that I was really looking for for Anne and so I think that you know for all four of you and again we can get into like the politics of it because there, <laughs> there is some when you like when you pick someone like I want this person you'll have like five people who know better, who are a little bit yeah. like, well, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like perhaps we should explore other options. A great example is um, for, for Justin, for Sprig, there was a, a, a lot of, uh, um, uh, not pressure, but uh, encouragement to find an adult male comedian who was established and sort of bind the character to that voice. And it was a smart idea and that has worked for like a number of projects. Yeah. But I think for us, we, we really needed the authenticity of youth for Sprig, which Justin brought in spades. Still does, Justin, even though you are you are a man now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I heard your voice change, I was like, oh, Justin! <laughs> I can't believe 1,600 Sprig. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, that's, 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 how long did it take you to listen to all those? <laughs> <laughs> so what we would do is I, I, ha I have this amazing co-producer too, his name's Jack and he's a great guy, great creative partner. We would just kind of have to, you know, you can kind of set them to autoplay. Uh, um, so we would sit down in, in this kind of group working room called, we call it the bullpen. I don't know if anyone else calls their workroom that, but like whatever. We sat in the bullpen, we would just hit play and you would just kind of close your eyes and mm -hmm. like lean back and just let them sort of wash over you. And when, when you heard one you liked, you would say like, like, stop it, stop it. You know what I mean? Like, what was the number? And then we would go back and start whittling it down from there. You know what I mean? But, and again, that was just to find the one that we liked. And sure. then when you found the one that you liked, you you might have to pitch it, you know what I mean? To the powers that be and be like, right. here's why I think, you know, this person is perfect for this role. And most of the time it's like, yeah, sure, absolutely. But sometimes it's a discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, because I, I feel like this might, I might be wrong, but first of all, I had never really done a lot of voiceover. I've done it like here and there, and I was so nervous going to read for this, but it was the seeing the drawing and the rendering of Anne with like leaves in her hair and like mm -hmm. one shoe and being half tie that like, I was like, this feels so bizarre because I was half tie and I just connected, but also I'm not a voice actor. So I went in, I remember telling Matt specifically, I was like, hi, this is Brenda. I'm a one trick pony. This is all you get. Like, <laughs> there may be a slight variation, but this is really all you get. And cause I feel like I came into read like four years ago, if not like, yeah, I, I, like it was a long time ago. And I came in a million times because I feel, cause I think that um, someone over there didn't like me for the role, but Matt kept pushing me for this part, kept bringing me back in and we worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And I appreciate it so much because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and so I always say, it's like, I'm sitting here because of Matt Raleigh. Oh, oh, that's really nice. And like, yeah, so I mean, true I, though. it's very true. <laughs> I, I can't get into it. Like I will not, course, I will not course. confirm or, or deny anything, but <laughs> I, do, I do think there was, there was definitely a strong insistence on my part for a certain kind of voice that, and like also once I had heard your voice, I was sort of like married to it. And it, that's sort of the same for all four of you where it was like, 
you know, if you change this, like if you change Bill as Hop Hop, you're gonna yeah. drastically change the character. I did change it a little bit from the, the first time that I got the, uh, oh. the audition. As a matter of fact, with your permission, I'll show uh, please, people. Please. This is the way that Hop Pop, this is the original look of Hop Pop. <laughs> I found the original audition. And then they gave me five lines. And I recorded those lines and sent it in. And it took an interminable amount of time, it seemed like. And then they called me in to do kind of a, it was a, a kind of a, a, a test pilot uh, script. And then after that, it was like a year, year and a half before it actually went into production. And I was thinking, did they like what I did? But uh, I remember first when I looked at him, I thought of him maybe more as a Southerner. Uh, yeah. So I did more of a deeper South kind of thing and kind of made him a little bit more nasal. But then <laughs> it just seemed to be right to kind of take him into East Texas. There was some more stuff that I could do with a voice uh, with different emotions that I could with the deep Southern one. And uh, so he kind of evolved from uh, the deep South Georgia or somewhere to, to Texas. <laughs> that is such a great You are such a legend, state. Bill. You just are. Just watch it. Yeah, that. It's like totally. And you, you guys all know that like uh, Bill is the voice of Goofy. That's like a crazy. I, I, I flipped out when I, when I found that I was playing Bill. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> and Pluto. So I've been around Disney for a long time and uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's such a weird business, too, because, you know, you don't you do an audition and you forget about it because you have to do about 100 to get one, you know, and uh, so you can't let that play around in your mind. And so when they call back, oh, they like you to uh, come in for a hot pop. You know, I always say I don't believe it until the check clears because yeah. a lot of stuff can happen before it actually gets to air. But I was delighted. And uh, he's just a uh, a favorite character that I've ever actually got to come up oh. with a voice. Whereas Goofy, he was around since the 1930s. So I kind of had to fill some existing shoes, but Hop Pop is just a joy because it's so much um, freedom to bring you into the character. And I guess I am now a gripey old frog. You know? <laughs> no. no really, Bill, you're so funny. Anytime that they like do any sort of playback, you always like, I'm always cracking up at the stuff you do because you're so funny. And you like take what's written on the paper and just like to the next level. I mean, you guys all do. It's my favorite. I always tell Eden to just play me this, like what they have because I love hearing you guys and what you guys do. It's just, it's so amazing. I love watching and learning from you guys. You guys are so amazing. I hope there's a chance where you all get to record together. We were just, um, for the audience, we were talking right before we all went live, but um, I asked the voice actors if they record together or if they're all record separate and it's all separate. So, um, and yeah. now with COVID right here, and this is my little <laughs> studio in my house. And I did the whole last season, you know, and uh, in here. All at home. Yeah. Bill is fancy. He's got like a whole studio. I'm literally in the corner of my closet with like a blanket and like a microphone trying to do all of this. Behind me. I can like move around. <laughs> yeah. Can we see your studio? It's Bill, so can we awesome. see your stuff? <laughs> um, how about uh, Amanda and Justin? How, how was it? Uh, how about you for, for um, you know, getting into casting and, and for your characters auditioning? Well, it was kind of really similar to uh, everybody else's process. Like I remember auditioning for this. I remember seeing this cute little polywog and <laughs> you know, sometimes an audition will come through and you're like, I want this so bad, you know, but rarely do you ever get the one that you want so bad, you know? And then, you know, maybe like a year or something goes by, don't hear anything. Then um, I keep bugging my agent about it. I was like, have you heard anything on it? Have you heard anything? I just really want it so bad. And then um, then all of a sudden we heard that, um, that it was going through. And then we came in and we did kind of like a test pilot. And then it seemed like, I think another year went by <laughs> and I was bugging my agent again. And I was like, I'm like, so is it, is it a go? Are we going? Yes. And um, yeah. And then cartoons the take forever. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, this is so amazing <laughs> to hear from from your guys' perspective. Because it's like every time, like you're like, and then we waited a year, and I was like, it was a year of hustling, man. You know what I mean? Like, of like, <gasps> no, seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but like it's it's so it's funny to hear that you're like, oh man, I I you know, I whiffed that or like whatever it is. And it's like oh, yeah. it has it like has nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? It's like just these other forces 
around. Oh, I spent a year <laughs> thinking I blew it. I blew no, no, it. No, no, oh no. my god. <laughs> Uh, like, like you mentioned, Matt, um, I mean, like, when you listen to everyone's auditions, and I mean, you're the creator of these characters, so you know the characters better than anybody. And I, I feel you when you're like, when you just close your eyes and like you're listening to all these different, um, you know, takes and all these different actors. And then like, as, as, as soon as you hear the person who's right for that part, you can tell, you know, you're like, that's, that's the character. You know, I, I, it's, it's hard to explain, but I just find it really like fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's a gut, it's a gut thing, right? Yeah, it's not like something yeah. that you can like really put into words. I mean, that's what makes the casting process so tricky when it comes to voice acting. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot in there. <laughs> and Polly was the first character I ever saw because I was on, well, I worked on Pickle and Peanut and then I was on Star versus the Forces of Evil. And I remember walking past the uh, Amphibia section of TVA um, right when Amphibia was starting and they had like, uh, kind of like um, the uh, behind you, Justin, they had like cardboard cutouts of all the characters. And they, uh, one day they only had Polly and they didn't have anyone else yet. But I was just like, that's the most adorable character I've ever seen. <laughs> so <laughs> like, adorable. It instantly made me excited for the show. Easy to draw like, too. Two years before the show came out. <laughs> We all had to remember. We all had to try to draw Polly mm -hmm. at that 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 TV uh, event. Yeah, D twenty three. How to draw Polly? <laughs> um, I have the little notebook from that. But oh, oh yay! Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we want we want to hear from you, Justin. Like, how, yeah. what was your perspective? So, Justin also was someone who, like, you know, we brought you in, and then six months went by. You know what I mean? Or eight months, or nine months? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I, I remember the first time I got the uh, the script for the audition, um, I was like, well, I wonder what I'm gonna do. Cause I, my voice is kind of like naturally raspy. And I was like, well, that would probably go really well with like a little frog. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. I'll pitch it. And it's funny cause this was before I had a, a studio here um, a couple of years actually before I we built the, our closet into the studio. Um, and so I was uh, just recording on my phone in my garage actually in my car. Um, and so, yeah, I was like sitting in there for a long time and I was trying different things. And so I finally went up to like this range and so I was like, oh, yeah, that works. That sounds like a little frog. And so I did it, I sent it in and I was like, wow, it's similar to what Amanda was saying. Like, I really want this role. This is like yes. the perfect role for me. Like, I love it. And, uh, it's a lot of fun and everything. So I sent it in, waited a little bit. And then I, whenever I got a call back, I was really, really excited. My agent, like send an email and she was like oh my gosh you know because I'd been really really wanting it and so I remember the first time whenever I went into Disney TVA I was like starstruck because like I was seeing like all like you know we go through the the um the security and everything and we're we're like calling casting and getting let in and I'm seeing like all these different shows with like different actors pictures and everything and it was so amazing and so I was a little nervous because there were like I remember there were quite a few other people auditioning, like there uh, different age ranges too. Like I think the guy before me was uh, like probably like in his mid twenties. So yeah. And then there was another kid that was like even way younger than me. So I was like, wow, this is a you know a large range of different people. So you you don't know you don't know the half of it. Get this. This is like <laughs> this is this is. A, I mean they they had um uh uh, uh I'm trying to Annie Richter came in. Oh, and like it was awesome you know what I mean but it's it's one of those yeah. things too where it was just like see that's the the range that we were sort of playing with and dealing with and so like yeah and I remember honestly guys every time you came back I felt bad because I was like yeah come on you know what I mean? let's do it like here we go like you know what I mean like I don't want to like I it, it, it feels like at a certain point yeah you are kind of giving them the, the run around a little bit like yeah it's like more sides and, and more auditions but like for me at least in my heart of hearts you guys really nailed your first auditions. Like I did, I I did not need much convincing. You're 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 all incredible, and you have such good chemistry too. That's another thing. And Nico, you can you can uh, uh, you know chime in here. But like with when you have an ensemble show, you all need to sound good together. So something we would do is that I think you know once we had Brenda locked in, we were like we would play the sprigs next next to her because like you you want to make sure that you you guys aren't even occupying the same almost like you know, vocal space, like tonal space. Like if, if Brenda's low, then Sprig needs to go high. You know what I mean? If they're both low, then it's going to get weird kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
I just realized we have a clip, actually. Oh, to, yeah. To we demonstrate just exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so is it frozen? Yeah, you're frozen, Brenda. Oh, that's weird. Oh. oh. Wait, let me turn off my video and start it again. Wait, let's see. I looked at my face and I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. Sorry. I was like, that's amazing how she holds a pose. There you go. There, there we go. go. Cool. Yay. Um, uh, Matt, you edited this or? No, no, I didn't edit. No, no, okay. no. It is, it is just a clip from an upcoming okay. episode that airs. You, you brought a clip to my attention that's uh, a nice, a really nice uh, display of, you know, all four characters and actors working together in this scene. Um, so uh, we can show that uh, for everybody now. <laughs> You want this one? No, no, all yours. What the heck is going on? Aha! Found it. So, uh, remember when Hop Hop and I went to pick up the wagon? Well, on our way back, Mrs. Croker asked if we could pick her up a new romance novel while we were in the city. Before we knew it, everybody was asking for stuff, so we made a wish list. We hid the list in a special place so we wouldn't forget. And then we forgot it. What? I'm so sorry, you guys. Please don't get mad. Oh, no, 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 no. It's okay, Polly. You're just a baby. But you! I cannot believe you forgot about something so important, Hop Pop. Look, I'm sure we can find a way to bury this so no one finds out. Nope. Lying will only make it worse. I feel like we've learned that lesson by now. Well, one thing's for sure. We have to lie. Preach! Wait, what? Ivy asked for a red sunshell from the Newtopian coast to match my blue moon shell. Oh! She can't find out, Anne. What if she gets mad? What if she thinks I don't like her? The relationship will be over before it starts. Ugh, fine. I'll do it for Sprivey. No way I'm letting that ship sink. Great. Now, let's put our heads together and come up with a plan. Oh, yeah. And we better hurry or you might forget. It was one time, Anne! Awesome. Yeah. I think I, I just think that that's like a great just hearing all four, you know, characters working off each other. <laughs> I love the I love the close-ups of uh Anne's uh, facial expressions there too. Yeah, you know, I mean you mentioned that we don't record together, but like we do a lot of work to make sure that it feels like they're in the mm -hmm. same room. You know what I mean? And I think this is yeah. a great example of that. And really just like what I love about this clip, and this is from our episode that actually airs this weekend because the show's coming back crazy i know yeah. this weekend at 9 30 on disney channel there's the plug um, <laughs> but but uh um in this clip everyone is so funny like you know what i mean like everyone's kind of brought their a game their comedy a game like i i love the baby voice that both like brenda and amanda get to do i love how like irate bill sounds at the end when he's like it was one time man and i love how kind of obsessive that justin sounds when he's like going on and on about like, you know, how Ivy, this is trouble for him and all that stuff. Like, I think it brings out these great neurotic qualities in our characters. <laughs> yeah, but also it's such a testament to, you know, everyone working behind the scenes as well to be able to make it sound like we are in the same room. Like our voice director, Eden Regal, who's incredible, who like records this, like who, who knows what we're all doing, but somehow pulls these performance out of like us individually like it's it's so difficult I couldn't even imagine because even for me watching that it makes me like so excited and it seems so bizarre that it really does feel like we were all recording like how we're doing it now like reading off of each other so I mean it's such like it's such like movie magic for me I'm just like <laughs> oh my god yeah, <laughs> yeah totally, totally. Uh, a lot of people don't know that when you do a cartoon you're not looking at the cartoon a lot of people mm -hmm. think that you're doing that and putting voices to a visual. Uh-uh, it's just a written page. And so you have to be able to feel like, what would Sprig be sounding like? You know, how he sounds, you gotta know those characters so you can respond to them in your head. And that makes it rough, I think, for the voice acting. Um, it's probably easier on the editors and stuff, but uh, you know, it would be so much fun to record one with everybody. Hint, hint. If we can. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> noted, noted. We can, we can do it. We can do it when, when COVID is over and, and it's safe to do it. I, I'd love to do it. And to be honest, there are people on the crew have also been begging for it. I have, oh, I have a couple people uh, from Steven great. Universe, and and on Steven, they always did it together. Like it was almost yeah. like they swore by it. 
but like I'll be honest I'm such a control freak that like <laughs> what ended what ends up happening is I'm like hmm, ah, hmm I don't know I'd really like to uh, record them all individually and edit, edit it together you know what I mean like, <laughs> I think it'd be fun to do like a live read or something it'd be amazing like yeah. us for, yeah, or just like for people it would be incredible because because yeah. I'm the same way because I'm so, I think I'm so like, because I'm, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing all the time. Like yeah. you can ask Eden or you can know, no Matt, like I do 700 takes of every line <laughs> and they all probably sound exactly the same. <laughs> but in my mind, I'm like, no, it sounded slightly different. No, no. A lot of people <laughs> are like that. A lot of people, a lot of people are robots, but like your takes are always like wildly oh, different. Oh, you're kind. You're very, No, very no, kind. it's the truth. Matt, you're usually there for the records, right? So here's how it works. Here's, here's the deal. <laughs> so basically, um, I was there for most of the beginning of season one. Like, I would say for the first half of season one, I was at every record. And like with these guys in the booth, we were really making sure that the characters were themselves. You know what I mean? Kind of like, eh, you could call it kind of like, we have to set the, the, the suit base a little bit. You know what I mean? Just to make sure that, okay, it's all, it's all good. You can refer to these first 10 episodes. So what ended up happening, and this this happens when your your show running is basically your time is like all is everything, and everybody wants it, and they want you like in all these different places at once. And basically, what happened was is that our co-producer uh, and story editor Jack Ferriolo, he was also very good at um, doing voice recording and voice directing. In fact, he had done it for years. He started out on on home movies where he was just you know, editing eight hours of dialogue into like yeah. a funny 11 minute episode. Like I have no idea how the hell he was doing that and not going crazy, but he was so good at voice directing that like, I couldn't be there. Do you know what I mean? Where I was just like, sure. there's no reason for me to be there. Cause he's so good. And he's so good at getting these great performances. He, he knows the material so well. Cause like, you know, he like helped write it or whatever. <laughs> anyway. So the second, and it was kind of like one of those sad moments where the writing was on the wall where I just like looked around and I was like, I shouldn't be here. Oh. You know what I mean? Like I need to go back to base. <laughs> like I, no joke, I need to go back to base and like do help with something that needs help. Like put out a fire somewhere else. Like, and, and so that happened to Jack too because what ended up happening was that Eden was so good at it. Like our voice director, and so at a certain point, Jack looked at the writing on the wall and was like, I shouldn't be here. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Eden's doing, Eden's doing such a good job. So I feel so bad because like our amazing voice talent, we just don't get to spend as much time together as I'd like, mostly because the people who are doing this amazing work for us are doing such a good job. So mm -hmm. I do I do pop in hither and tither when like it's something very specific, but it's, it is one of those sad situations where if you guys are knocking it out of the park, you just won't see me. You know what I mean? Like, so we should be like, nervous anytime you jump on the call. Then, <laughs> yeah, when I'm there, it's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> well, um, if Matt's along, on the call, I'm gonna be shaking. No, 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 no. Did do you all like Bill? Do you all have um, home setups now for, during uh, pandemic times? Mine is not a built-in studio in the closet or like as Shmanazi is built. I'm truly like in a corner of my closet like a mic and like a little shield, yeah. maybe a sheet over me every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we did pad up my closet, but yeah, we made a little makeshift studio in the uh, in the closet. Just so grateful to be able to, to do and to continue working and to working on the show during the crazy, you know, the crazy pandemic. Yeah. Thankfully it doesn't hit animation too hard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Thank God been for technology. Yeah, no, I can't believe it that they were able to put it together and and they got kits out to you guys, you know what I mean, yeah. when you needed them. It's it's really amazing. I was so worried too, because like, how could all these people recording from different qualities of sound, like, but you know, out loud, the studio that we work with that does the recording, the they're the best. Yes, exactly. They're the best. Cool. Best in the biz. <laughs> nah, Mark. Yeah. Mark is so awesome. I think they're like, yeah. Mark is the best. <laughs> they're, they're, oh, they're just so wonderful. All the oh, man. there, I love them all. I have a funny story about Mark, who's who's the owner of that studio. He's awesome. He's an amazing guy. He does magic tricks. So like, uh -oh. he. but here's the thing is that like, he actually, he did this amazing thing where he was like, hey, do you want to see a magic trick? I was like, yeah, man, like, absolutely. <laughs> and as he was doing the magic trick, he like gave me some criticism, actually. He was like, so do you guys really need everything at 15% like compressed, <laughs> sent over? Do you also, do you, are you sure you need that? But he's like doing a trick at the same time. So like, 
it was amazing. I was like, I after he did the trick and he left, I turned to Jack and I was like, I think he just like gave us some criticism, man. Like I think he was, <laughs> he was telling us like you don't need the fifteen percent lines, and and for clarity, that's fifteen percent compressed for speed, which sometimes we you know little trade secrets. Sometimes we compress the audio a little bit to like make uh -huh. it fit. Yeah, totally. I think I think you can go up to fifteen percent and it doesn't sound super mm -hmm. weird, but like so we had it all delivered in both, and I remember Mark was kind of like. But do you need this? Because it's a lot of work. You know what yeah. I mean for our guys. <laughs> Most shows I've worked on is everyone sped up ten percent, five. Really? Yeah. Well, um, I I've always been accused of speaking very quickly, and I love working on this show because I always have to speed up because Matt speaks even quick, like faster than I do. It's not I my fault. It. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's it's an eleven minute show, so like sometimes I'm like, we gotta go, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, they can read the closed captioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they have a problem, just read. Turn on closed captioning. <laughs> um. Uh, I think we, we're getting tons of questions, so maybe we should jump into those. Never, um, never. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're just having fun talking shop here. Um, I'm getting them all texted to me here. So um, we're getting so many questions also, everyone, that um, no hard feelings if yours doesn't get asked. Um, a lot of people will ask the same questions too. So we'll try to hit up everyone. Um, uh, from Riley, starting off, uh, were there any scenes in Amphibia that were hard to record emotionally? Hmm. There's some, okay, so be careful here, guys, because you may not yeah, there, know. Yes, it's some spoilers. I was about to say, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on, Wait, hold on. So, so, <laughs> so there are some, some episodes that have not aired. I would say that the characters give very emotionally involved performances. I I think let me let me point to some that have, and then you guys can can chime in so that we don't like you know spoil anything here. Um, Brenda, there's this amazing scene at the end of Hopping Mall where you talk about missing your mom. Uh, yeah, that has aired and was like I was so worried about that, wow. mostly because like we've never pushed the character in that direction. Wow. But yeah. you did such an amazing job. If you oh, want to talk about you. that at all, uh, that you know. It's always interesting because on this show, we're always so happy and like lively and like you yeah. do fight scenes doing crazy things. When I first read it and also it being, you know, an animation children's show, I remember Eden and I really talking about it, like, you know, how far do we push this? And what I really love is just that we just took it to a real place. Like I'm really, really close with my mom and we just took it to a place of imagine if this really happened, how I would feel. And I think that's what I love about this show so much is that everything comes from, even though we're in a crazy, like in a crazy frog world, everything, all the emotions and the storylines come from like real places and real emotions. So it makes the dialogue so easy. So whether we're doing something crazy or getting something emotional, it's literally, and also Eden Regal is so wonderful because just working with her and like just getting into that place, it actually was, it's a lot easier than you think it is. It's more daunting when I first read it. I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? And you get into it and just talking it out with Eden and the words are there. It's all there. That's what's so like, all the writers and everyone does such a great job on our show that I feel like I never really have to do much work. I'm literally a puppet reading things on a page because it's already there for me. Um, <laughs> And so it's so great. Like I look forward to reading these scripts every week. So I remember reading that one and just feeling like, oh my goodness, this is another side of not just Anne, but the show that we're seeing and really just bringing it back to what the heart of the show is. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it honestly, it was more daunting going into it, but once we were already, when we were there, it felt really natural and really good. Um, and it, that's one of my favorite scenes, one of my favorite episodes, actually, it's so sweet. Awesome. Justin, you had the same scene, actually. How did you, yeah. like, like, how do you guys, and this is so interesting, because you, you're in character, you're, you're staying in this cartoony space, but you're emoting. Like, how do you do it? <laughs> well, oh my gosh, yeah, I, re I remember getting super emotional when I, um, whenever I was recording it. Um, and of course, Eden was doing a really, really great job explaining the line to me and everything. Um, and yeah, I, I remember even, like, feeling that, like, welling up feeling inside where I was, getting so much into character where I was like, oh my gosh, I might start crying right now. Um, and it was just, it, you know, once I was into that um, kind of zone, I guess, uh, it, it was actually pretty pretty easy to just read it through and, and for all of that to just come out, so. 
That's great. That's so funny when you're like, I almost cried. And like, we're such monsters, like on the production <laughs> side that we're like, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, all of the, like, can we catch these tears? Like, can we like, you know what I mean? Like, um, so Bill, yeah. we cannot talk about the stuff that I would like to talk about, but can you speak broadly about how you do that? Like, how do you emote and get very emotional with these characters? And, and again, like hop up, yes. Goofy also, you know what I mean? There, there, there are moments yeah. that really call for the emotion needs to be genuine, but you're still doing a hyper real voice. Yeah, it's a, well, it's more of a technical thing to do the voice and get into the character. And once you feel comfortable with that um, and you know the character, then it's more about emotionally not making yourself be emotional, but letting yourself be emotional. It's your normal emotions that are in there it's to unbottle them and let them out. And it is surprisingly uh, easy to do once you let yourself do it. You let yourself get emotional and it just kind of flows. And luckily we can do it over and over till we do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I don't know, it really sounds like chewing bubble gum and walking to me, you know what I mean? Like the whole like- <laughs> um, And you kind of learn it after a while. Uh, that's and it's amazing. That hard. And you start to think like Hop Pop or Goofy or any character that you inhabit. You like, it's kind of like split personalities. You know how they would ra react when you really know your character and how they'd react in any situation. And that's when you go, ah, I got this character. Wow. And you can do about anything with it. Amazing. Wow, that's that's kind of creepy, split personality. That's, <laughs> that's incredible. I like, I like too how you said you were inhabiting the character. It's almost as if like, you know, I don't know, you're a guest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, that's really interesting. Um, and Amanda, same thing. We can't really talk about the stuff where you get very emotional, but for a character like Polly, who is so up here, yeah. You know what I mean? At, at, at all times. How did you bring her to a space where you felt like you could get genuine? I mean, I, um, Bill said it perfectly. Like the voice was such like a technical part of it. It was just finding that feeling already inside of you and how you would react and how Polly would react. And you find those, you know, similarities together. And then the last thought was the voice. Like first it was get myself there let it be genuine and authentic and something that people can connect to and then just layer the voice on top of it. Sometimes you have to remember because you know like you're in it you're like okay and you're like oh wait like I gotta be up here like you know. Oh, <laughs> oh, so you guys are amazing. That was incredible. <laughs> it, sounds like, um, it sounds like upcoming episodes are gonna get really really uh, heavy. <laughs> I don't know maybe who can yeah. say I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Bill, I wanted to bring up really quick. I've heard you talk about Goofy and Wilbur, that are you know the uh, classic yeah Goofy short, and just how emotional that is. You know yeah. that always got me. Goofy and his little grasshopper friend. <laughs> Those are the most fun episodes to do. Uh, when I did a, a Goofy movie, uh, that yeah. was the first time he had a son, mm -hmm. and so I put my son in place of Max and. Yeah the emotions came easy and but we never had to do that before. So adding those layers and letting these characters go to where they haven't ever been before uh, is, is a lot of fun and it's a great challenge and you can always then return to his basic self, but yeah. you get to go on these little journeys into different emotions and uh, it's, it, it, it's cool to do. Dude, goofy <laughs> movie, man. Like the idea too, like of how intense some of that stuff was and how like, beautifully in character it was like I mean uh, you hear this so much Bill but like you really carved such like amazing childhood moments for us yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that's because of countless recording sessions <laughs> and doing it over and over. we recorded on that off and on for over two years wow. really it it finally yeah was totally animated yeah <laughs> wow they I went to that movie to with that. my dad. <laughs> <laughs> we go in and boom, one, two, three, and hopefully <laughs> onto the next line, you know. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, uh, there's a three or four questions here that I'm just going to kind of combine. Um, what's everyone's favorite um, episode so far? Uh, everyone's favorite joke so far? Any favorite characters uh, that aren't your own? Um, oh. That's from a few people. I'm kind of just condensing. Real Real quick, and if I talk about the uh, first uh, 
I love horror, so I think uh, Children of the Spore is yeah. One of the yes, I do episodes. love that episode. <laughs> and the one with the Zapapedes where uh, yeah, Suspicion yeah. Island was fun, and because uh, uh, that was that was a fun one too. Um, Suspicion yeah, Island was one of my favorites. Come to mind. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so um, if you if you guys are like, what's the name of that episode? I'm here for you. I'm totally here for you. <laughs> um, also, like, it's a funny game because like we we memorize the production codes, but at a certain point, you're just like, I don't fuck, I don't know what this yeah. like. Is it two thirteen? Is it three <laughs> thirty? Like, I don't even know anymore. Um, that's taking charge, and Justin actually sings in it. And there's this amazing part where they're like going up the hill, and it's oh. this um, incredible song that like the um the wife of a board artist wrote. Oh, really? uh, actually huh. yeah it's really it's really cool and i think there's a part where you say like you know hostiling beguiling you, you say something that you're like randy so hot you know what i mean <laughs> or something like and it's it's thrown away but that's like definitely one of my favorites same it's so yeah, good that was so much fun i remember whenever um uh because i i i got an email and they're like yeah we'd love to have you sing in this next episode and i was like oh awesome and I remember like just loving going through the the song, listening to it, prepping for it. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. I love that, that we have different, very different reactions to when we get emails about us singing. Just like, <laughs> oh, that's fun. Me, I'm like, oh God, Matt, how dare you? You promised me. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, I was like, this is like, I don't want to make it like giving a cat a bath. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's so funny. I, I would say, I went through, like, I went all of my Disney days never really doing the singing thing because I'm like, I'm, you know, I, I it's horrible. I have, like, the last name for it, but I can't sing anything. I was like, I'll only do it for you, Matt, and only for the show because I love it so much. But every I, time I get I'm like, I have to sing. I couldn't do it, so I'm so grateful. And, like, also, too, like, it was one of those things, too, where, like, you know, I really wanted a song, and then, like, actually a different department wanted a song. Do you remember they did, we did, like, a Christmas thing? And I remember like we had a conversation about that and we came in and did it. And yeah. I remember you were like, cool, all right, we did it. I was like, actually, that's not like, oh, that's not the thing I needed. You know what I mean? Like there's something else. <laughs> there's like, there's um, another song. Yeah, another I know. Song. I am so sorry. No, no don't apologize. <laughs> I just, I, I should apologize. I'm so no. sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, but it yeah, no, I'm excited. Great. That's an episode that hasn't aired yet, right? That's right. Yeah, that's going to be really fun. Yeah. So, yeah, look no, out for that. <laughs> It's gonna be really good. Of luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, also, um, Ferocia's in the chat. Just want to say hi, Ferocia. Hi, Ferocia. <laughs> Door board Ferocia's, artist. Ferocia's a board artist on the show and a dear Hello, friend. <laughs> um, also, a couple, couple, a uh, few people here. I'll just combine their questions. Um, uh, and Matt, mostly for everybody, anyone who wants to chime in. Um, I've heard that Amphibia is partially inspired by your childhood. Um, uh, and can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, possibly your creative process for uh, bringing in um, personal stories from life and putting them into the show or yeah, through, so, through characters. Yeah, so, so Brenda actually said it best when she said that like, you know, the stuff that works the best on the page is sort of like inspired or grounded by something real. You know what I mean? Like, it's a lot easier to write something that you yourself have felt, which again, by the way, like you can also write great stuff and do great stuff without that. But it's, it's, I think like it's a lot easier and it's a lot effective. Like I think a lot about like Kill Bill, which is like amazing. I love Kill Bill, but I mean, like, I don't know that like there was a, you know, personal experience from Quentin Tarantino that inspired her. And it's just like, Are you sure? badass. well, you're right, actually, you know what, what do I know? Um, but like for, for this show, you know, it, it was really inspired by like, my childhood trips to Bangkok when I was a kid and the feeling of them, you know what I mean? Like when I say that they inspired the show, I don't mean that like, well, I got transported to a frog world and ever since <laughs> then I've wanted to make this show. No, it was more just that like, I remember the feeling of being a kid from California, landing in Bangkok and just like the humidity hitting you like a brick wall. It was such a different place, such like a, a kind of scary place for me as a kid. But then like slowly but surely, I really came to love it and enjoy it. And, and not want to leave. And I, I think what I was really looking to bottle up was, was that sensation of like, you get to a place, you know, it's a new school or a new job and it's scary and you don't know anyone and you just don't know how it's going to go down. And then over time, you really learn to love that place and your connection with it is stronger for it. So like, it's that kind of thing that I go into the pitch with, into the pitch Bible with, like, I have that nugget of kind of like, 
human truth. You know what I mean? Deep in there. That's like, now I can write a show around that. I know what those feelings are like. Like I know what it's like to go to college and miss your parents for the first time. And that stuff goes into hopping mall. Do you know what I mean? So the more kind of things you can draw from your own life, they will feel authentic. And I think, I think that's, that's when I say like the show is inspired by my childhood experiences. That's really what I'm talking about. It's a, more of like a creative tool that I think everyone can and should use sort of. I'm getting a lot of what's your favorite episode, but we've talked about that. Eli asked um, for everyone, what advice can you give to fellow creatives, uh, young artists and the like to create work based on their own experiences growing up, whether it be movies, shows, books, et cetera. Um, I'd love it to, to invite the others to chime in in terms of like, there's a lot of people who also are looking to break into voice work. You know what yeah. I mean? Like a lot of people in animation are looking to kind of do that kind of thing. And it's, it's funny how many people I see actually online who are like, I wanna write, I wanna direct, I wanna do voice acting for cartoons. I'm like, all those things? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like more power to you. So just for me, I would say, you know, don't, don't be too discouraged by rejection in the sense that like, you know, that's why I love telling people like Amphibia was like the third thing that got off the ground for me. The first two, oh, they didn't go so great. And that's okay. Cause like every time like they, I did, I had a meeting where I could tell the person was losing interest or like there was just something that wasn't landing that's all right you take that stuff back into the shop and you you learn from it you grow from it and you you, you get out there and you, you take another swing you know what i mean mm. uh how about you guys like in terms of like getting into voice work doing acting for, I, for me just in general like i always say that um you're uniquely you and there's only one you and that's what you have to bring into the room because you're never going to be right for every part there's always going to be a million parts that you think you're perfect for but you also have to be on the same page as everyone else in that room. And so the thing for me is that when I read something, I try to just bring as much of myself and my own experience to it. Because like I said, with this experience, I'm not a voice actor. I've never really done anything like this. And I just went in and was like, okay, like Anne is just like a version of me. Because I was like, I see a lot of myself in Anne and that's what really drew me to it. And so I went in there and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not a voice actor. I can't do crazy anything. I'm just going to go in there and do my version of her because I connected with her and for some reason it connected with Matt and I feel so grateful and when things like that happen it feels so natural and that's when it feels really good and that's when you you know come into a place like this where you love what you do you love the work that you're doing the people that you're working with and so it's like yes do, like do, you know don't get discouraged but also just remember that you are unique in your own way. And that's what's going to get you jobs. It's not trying to be like someone else. It's just go in there and do you. And because you know what? There, for every job that you don't get, for every no, there'll be another yes. And you just have to take that like criticism and just learn from it. It's like, it's really hard. I mean, I've been doing this since I was like five years old. I've heard more no's than you could ever imagine. But at the same time, all those no's have really shaped my career and my life into a place where like, I'm so happy all the people that I've met, all the experiences that I've had. Um, to me, this is just like, it just, your job just kind of guides you through your like journey. Um, so yeah, just like always just do you and like really try to stay positive. It's really hard in this industry because every, you know, especially when it's you're creative and you're an artist, it's really hard when you hear someone say no to your like idea that you've been working on for so long. That's really, really hard. But just like, remember, like stick to your guns and like believe in yourself. It sounds like so corny, but it's like the truth. I mean, I know I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't just truly love what I did and really just kept wanting to do it and just kept <laughs> pushing myself. Go be like, hey, Matt, what can I do differently? Hey, Matt, what can I do differently? Hey, Matt, what can I do differently? But yeah, my two cents. Yeah, there's a, a, a couple of things on, on top of that. Obviously, you got to believe in yourself. You've got to do it and uh, let the rejection roll off because 99% of this is rejection. Uh, do it because you love it. Do it because you uh, have to do it, really. It's just, you know, don't do it for fame or money or anything like that. That'll come. But also please yourself. In other words, entertain yourself because if you can entertain yourself with the performance that you're doing, you will entertain others. Also, you can't let what you know it's so kind of intimidating when you're doing a recording session because people are looking at you through a glass wall and you know they're talking and they're probably, you think you're saying oh this guy's terrible whatever and they're probably saying no i don't want soup with that you know <laughs> <laughs> so true bill that is so true bill the more, you worry about, the more you worry about yourself the less room in your psyche for the character 
So you're getting out of it. If that character wouldn't be worried about people watching, you can't be either. It's just kind of getting away from that. And also people always tell me, you know, so people have always said they got the wrong impression. They'll say, you know, people tell me I got a great voice and I should do voiceover. That's kind of like saying I got a great guitar. I should be a guitarist. Mm -hmm. Your instrument, your voice is yours, but it's the acting. It's voice acting, not voice acting. The acting is the important part. Study acting. Great. Wow. I'm taking notes, you guys. Yeah, I'm taking yeah. notes, too. <laughs> How dare you, Matt? You guys all said it perfect already. I don't know what to add to it. <laughs> Besides, like, um, yeah, like, take everything with a grain of salt. Do it because you love it. There's going to be, it's hard. There's a lot of rejection, but, you know, um, there's a lot of hills and valleys, you know, one minute you're going to be working, working, working. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, every show ends and then yeah. there's the valley. And then the, it's almost like the job is auditioning it because really it really is. Yeah. Cause 90% of it is auditioning. And then it's like the reward is getting to do the job. So it's like, do it because you have a love for it. Like whenever, if ever I get discouraged or anything, I always think about, can I imagine myself doing anything else in the world? Could I be a vet? Would I be, could I do real estate? And I'm like, no, this is all I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. And, and be kind to yourself because sometimes, you know what, you're going to go into an audition and you're going to, you know, sometimes it doesn't always go your way. Sometimes you vomit and you're like, oh no, like, <laughs> and you know, like I had that one shot. And then, <laughs> uh, but you know what, you have to let it roll off and you got to be kind to yourself. And you guys say, you know what, there's always going to be the next thing, you know, um, even though that door is closed, another one's going to open and maybe it just wasn't, you know, meant to be. So yeah, be kind to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. I mean, yeah. I went probably from the very beginning, I went like, I think five or six years without, uh, booking anything. Um, and I would get a lot of callbacks. Uh, I think I got some callbacks for like Jake and the Neverland Pirates and for a lot of different things. And there were some times in, in those six years where I was like, oh my gosh, you know, should I, is this not the right thing for me? I mean, but I kept remembering, you know, and my, my parents would tell me this, you know, like, this is what you really want to do. You love this. So keep to it, keep on going and something will come eventually. And it wasn't until, um, I think it was like 2015 or something, uh, where I booked my first show, um, on the Disney junior show, the Lion Guard. And finally I was like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, it, as long as you stick to it and keep going and, you know, bring your emotion into the, into your, all the roles, you know, most of those roles you're never going to hear from again, but as long as you keep putting that emotion and you'll, you'll probably, you know, grab a couple. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your answers. Um, we had like 10 questions all asking about, you know, give me advice for voice acting. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> helped a lot of people. Um, Tammy has an additional question. Um, what's the most challenging thing you've had to do as a voice actor? Hmm. Oh, I want to answer this so bad, but it hasn't come out yet. So I know, I know what you're going to say, because I actually know, I listened to it, and you're amazing, by the way. I know exactly what Thanks, you're talking Brenda. about. Oh my no, gosh. <laughs> because I had the session right before you, got, sorry guys, I had the session right before you got to do that, you never <laughs> talking about it. I was like, if anyone can do it, it's Amanda. Oh um, my gosh, no, thank um, you. I know, sorry, we had no spoilers, but Amanda did something like so amazing. I'm like so <laughs> impressed. <laughs> Um, Thank you. <laughs> can I tell you, I think the hardest, but also the most fun about voice acting, at least for me, and also just the most challenging is just the fact that you go in there, like Bill said, with just a script and you are doing crazy, fantastical things sometimes, like doing fight scenes, speaking different languages, crying, singing, doing all that kind of stuff in a little booth. And you have to imagine it all, get yourself to that place without moving from the mic, because I'm a... I, I'm not sure if you guys are like this, but I like move so much in the booth. Like I'm always hitting yeah. things. And like when we're fighting, I'm actually fighting. Um, and it's just being able to get there and really being able to control and express that all through your voice because they can't see you. Yeah. And I find myself using like using so many like facial expressions and using my hands a lot to try to emote that something so little and like in your voice, it's something that I really have learned in the last couple of years. And it's why I love listening to you guys because you guys can just, 
every little word. Like I love listening to you, Bill, because like you can just take like one word and like just like just change the this the the music of it just a little, and it changes the whole sentence. And so for me, it's like learning those little things about myself because I'm like, this is just me and how I talk. Um, and so just learning those like little things that really can change a, a, a line or a scene with just like, you know, a little like change in your tone yeah. or your voice or a word. So I mean, that's been the most challenging, but also like the most fun that I've had in this whole process. Yeah, there's, um, uh, there's physical challenges and then there's kind of the acting challenge. They're, they're totally different. Scenes where you have to scream on end for five minutes or something can be rough on your vocal cords. And so you got to kind of pace yourself on that kind of stuff. But uh, generally, those are, you know, th th those are few and far between. So uh, at least with Hot Pop, it's just been, it's so close to me psychically, I guess, <laughs> that I've locked, once I locked onto the character, it doesn't seem hard. Do you usually uh, save all screaming and yelling lines till the end of your record session? Usually, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Are you guys always? Do you guys always have so much energy after your sessions? Because I'm always like buzzing after the yeah. session. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I feel amazing. <laughs> I, I go into sessions sometimes like early in the morning, and I'm like so exhausted by the end of it. I'm like, I'm ready for the day. It was like my cup of coffee. Yes. It's like you go in, you do like a couple screams, and then you're like, man, I feel good. Like. <laughs> It's very cathartic. It just kind of, yes. yeah, you get into it. It's almost like an exercise program. And that is so wonderful to hear because we sometimes are like, we we ran them ragged, man. I'm so sorry. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I really like all these, uh, all the voice actor questions here from Bianca. Um, she asked to the whole cast, can you name one way that you are like your character and then one way you are completely opposite of your character good question <laughs> that's it uh, uh, i don't think I, i'm as paranoid as uh hot pop is uh, <laughs> <laughs> he can be a little he, he can be a little crotchety but uh, <laughs> um suspicious no uh i mean all of these characteristics that the character has i have in me but they aren't dominant it's just you amp one up and kind of back off to find you know wh where a character lives, um, and uh, but that's a that's a good question. I'm trying to yeah. think of other things how I'm like him and not. And but he cares. He cares about. I care about my family, so I use that. He looks as Anne as his daughter in my mind when I'm I'm doing that, and that he really loves her. He doesn't sometimes want to let on that he does. He mm -hmm. likes to maintain a little bit of control but he cares deeply for everybody and loves everyone deeply. And uh, he's putting up a little wall. Sometimes I, I do that probably. Uh, as a shy person, sometimes you do that. Um, I guess that's that's about it with uh, with Hot Pop. I, I'm trying to remember. Uh, you know, you you have never flown off the handle the way that Hot Pop sometimes oh, no, does. No. You are a very, I'm a, Bill, you are a very evenly keeled person. So that yeah. I think that's a big difference. <laughs> well, it's also yeah, fun to get to do that, you know. <laughs> I'm also pretty that. sure, Bill, you're not a frog, so. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Here's something that uh, I don't know if I, I've ever told anyone. I, You know, when I went to high school, I went to high school in a little town, Pratt, Kansas. Our mascot, we were the fighting frogs. It was fake. Greenbacks. Oh. Our, our <laughs> emblem was a frog. <laughs> There's something there. <laughs> it was meant to be. Um, well, for me, I, the thing that I like loved about Anne is that she really did remind me of a version of like, my 13, 14 year old self. Um, because I feel like she really represents that side of me that I was like afraid to let out that insecure, yeah. wanting to fit in, um, falling under pressure, like, you know, peer pressure. Um, it really resonated with me. Um, and I love her dry sense of humor. I love it. I feel like um, the different, the big difference with us, I think I'm much more like bubbly than Anne, but what I love is her sense of humor and her dryness. Um, and like her, like her journey through all this really has hit home for me because 
this whole story for Amphibia about just like someone not feeling, going into a different world, whether that's school or a new job, like Matt said, or new country, new place. It's like, it really resonates with me just every day going to a new set or like, I remember having to go to different schools and just those feelings like all coming back is what really drew me to Anne. And is what I feel like the reason why I connect so much with her is just a lot of these feelings were like in these scripts that when I'm reading, I'm like, I remember going through this. Like it's, I know that's more of a general thing, but the, also the way that Anne sort of handles it um, reminds me a lot of when I was that age. So I feel like I'm actually a, a lot like Anne. Um, it's kind of weird. It's like, sometimes I'm like, Matt, I feel like you like went, like <laughs> you like, you like read like 14 year old mm -hmm. friend and was like, mm, let me write a character about her. Here's one one key difference is that Anne is very lazy and you are one of the hardest working people I know. <laughs> You're very kind. You're very kind. I, I also do have two and I also do tend to wear like two shoes. So <laughs> Yeah. Very different. Very different. Very different. <laughs> yeah. Um I would say like for me, I mean personality wise. Uh, me and Sprig are kind of different because like Sprig's a lot more hyper than I am. He's got a <laughs> lot more energy. Um, but but like the funny thing is that a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, but um, I love fishing. And so uh, Sprig also loves to fish, you know, with family fishing trip. That's one of my favorite episodes. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so whenever I remember seeing that episode and, you know, reading it out and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I love fishing, you know, like, um, so that was great. And then also, I guess Sprig's got that um, adventurous side to him where he loves going out on journeys, whether it's like hiking through the mountains and exploring and all that. And I think I've got a lot of that inside of me also. And so I'm able to kind of like put that into the character. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda? Okay, uh, let's see here. This is a hard one. Um, well, similarities. I think Polly and I both love candy and food <laughs> the yeah. same amount because if I see candy, I'm like, candy. And then um, I'm a little bit mischievous like her. Like me and my husband constantly try to prank each other. Oh, so, oh, like, I mean, we have like, I swear probably just like thousands of videos of us just like hiding and then going, ha! Ah! And then like recording the other person like screaming like in slow motion. So like, those are the similarities. I don't think I'm as kick butt as Polly though. She's very, yeah. Yeah, she's very uh, sure. intense. <laughs> uh, here's a short one for Matt um, from RJ. Uh, can we please get the Amphibia soundtrack on iTunes? I know it's not up to you, but uh, <laughs> um, from Bryson. Hello for Matt. When it came time to pitch Amphibia, did you pitch it as being um, quote low concept and add details later on, or did you? I see. Or did you pitch it as high concept from the very beginning? So did you kind of have like everything figured out or did you sort of figure out things as the show went on? We can't hear you, Matt. Okay. Oh no. <clears throat> Guess that was Matt's answer. <laughs> <laughs> he is le I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Matt. He's had it. <laughs> <laughs> He's had it with us. Um, Sorry about that. No, there's like an audio glitch with Zoom where sometimes I have to leave and come back. It's not because the question was offensive. Okay, so the first question, the first question was about the the soundtrack. So we'd love, oh, we'd, love to put a, we'd, we'd love to put out the soundtrack. I, I think that, you know, that that's something that that is possible. I, I know, you know, we're, we're getting more interested in putting stuff on Spotify and, you know, it, it could happen. So uh, keep your interest high and, and known and, and we will do our best on our side to try to make it happen because TJ's music is so beautiful and I would love for you guys to hear it. Sometimes, you know, the voices are covering it up, right? So it'd be awesome if you could <laughs> listen to it on its own sometime. Oh man, um, what was the other question? High concept, oh, then, high concept, um, low concept. Yeah, when you were pitching, uh, how much of the lore and the world of Amphibia did you have figured out? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so um, I think for a pitch, you know, it's always good to go broad and then get more and more detailed, you know, as you get further along. So what I brought was very high concept. It, I mean, if I could share the pitch Bible with you, it was something like three 13 year old mean girls get sent to a Lord of the Ringsy, crunchy, muddy frog world. Mm -hmm. And like from there, you know what I mean? It got into specifics, but what was useful about that starting there, starting at a very broad place is that who, whoever is reading it from that log line, they're either in or they're out. 
like already, you know what I mean? They're either like, yes, yes, I'd love to see something like this or just like, no, no, not, not what we're looking for. You know what I mean? Like there's the door, like get, get out of here or whatever it is. So I think that, you know, this is all about communication and whatever it is you can do to make their job easier, they're gonna respond to that. And I think that starting kind of broadly, it's very helpful for them, it's helpful for you. I mean, if you start with like minute details, it's a lot harder for them to get invested. They, they wanna think broad first. So that would be my recommendation. Cool. Um, from Wyatt, uh, is there a reason you chose Swamplands and Frogs as your fantasy world? Uh, did, did you have any other, other ideas for other animals that might have uh, starred? Do you just, um, is our frogs just like your favorite animal? Like I this, guess why frogs is the question. This question will follow me like yeah. for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, the, the why frogs of it all and like, you know, you know, whatever, let's do it. Here we go. Um, and it's so funny too, because like I did so much like um, press and you guys have done press for stuff before, but like it's a lot of the same, the same questions over and over again. Um, and the answer is, it is frogs because it is a story about change and frogs go through this great change in their lives. Not only that, but I really wanted something that our leading character would be uncomfortable with. And a lot of people are, are pretty uncomfortable with the idea of giant walking, talking frogs. <laughs> in fact, I, I had someone come up to me recently who works at the studio who was like, yeah, man, well, when I heard the premise, I was like, no, no, pass, pass, absolutely <laughs> not. Like, I, I hate frogs. Like, I, I can't, I can't deal with this. Like, but then I started watching the show and I was like, yeah, yeah, this is really good. And I was like, oh yeah, no, see, a lot of people are gonna have like kind of a knee jerk reaction, kind of like Anne. And that was a really good starting place from a character point of view as well. Great. <laughs> I love frogs. Yeah, me too, man. What <laughs> the know? heck? I mean, there's just so many different kinds and I love their colors and, you know. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, when we were actually like talking about promotional stuff at the very beginning of the show, I was like, what can we and can't do with the actors? And they were like, what? And I was like, could we, <laughs> could we like dump frogs on them? And they were like, no. I was like, okay, okay, okay. I mean, just <laughs> put it out there. What about fake rubber frogs? Probably, yeah. but we didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that reminds me. Um, I think in a in a kind of bout of madness and overconfidence, like I think I had like a really important pitch, right? Like a really important one. <laughs> and I was just like, this is gonna blow their socks off. So I bought like I bought like 300 little plastic frogs and I had them like in a box under my desk. And like, after I gave the pitch, I like threw them all on the table <laughs> and was just like, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and that's why development took two years. <laughs> that's also why they bought it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They did like, everyone did like grab a bunch though. It was like, it, like <laughs> seeing, seeing execs be like grabbing these plastic frogs was like very You didn't fun. mic drop, you frog dropped. I did. That's what I was yeah. going for, dude. <laughs> I love it. I think it's your Twitter profile picture, but I love the day where everyone made Play-Doh. Oh yeah, we made clay frogs. Made their own clay frog. That's the thing. That's the thing like about like this pandemic that is so like, I, it's so awful is that we really were like as a team, like really close and had a lot of fun together. We would do things like that, like get Play-Doh and make frogs out of Play-Doh. And like, you know what I mean? Again, like Brenda, you came down wants to say hi. And like, that's a huge memory for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, I love it's it. You. So it's just, it's insidious that like, we can't do that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, the next question is about the pandemic. From Micah, do you find that uh, the hiring process is easier during a pandemic since you don't have to worry about flying new employees in from all around the world? Mm. Oh, that's a really, you know, well, and, and from a casting point of view, that's interesting too. Okay, yeah. so um, <laughs> it, it, it hasn't really made it easier or, or harder. I think that like, you know, the demand is still incredibly high for artists and stuff, but like, I think what it has done is it made it a lot easier for us to work with people, you know what I mean, satellite. I mean, it, we don't fly them in, you know what I mean? I, I think for, for it, when we were back at the studio, it, it might've just been a no, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, cause like, oh, you're, you know, you're in another country or you're on the East coast and like, we really need someone here so they yeah. can be in studio. I think the pandemic has really relaxed who we're willing to work with which is very, very cool, very cool. And in fact, like, you know, it's interesting because we do record like some international folks as, as voice talent. We have Michelle Dockery coming on the show like occasionally and she's in, you know, the UK and like, that's just a scheduling thing. And it, it doesn't really matter. I, I feel like for, for casting, what is nice is that because the, you can record over there and they can pipe it into us, like 
it's pretty flexible. But I think on the art side, yeah, the pandemic has really loosened, I think, what we are comfortable and what the company is, is you know, willing to kind of go with in terms of like who we work with. Like they don't need to be in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, another pitching question from Rick. What is an example of, um, what is an example of episode prompts to include in a pitch Bible? How specific should it be? So did you have like short yeah. episodes? Yeah, I did. In your Bible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's customary to have like sort of, and this is, this is what's so weird about development is you're, you're pitching a lot of hypothetical stuff. Like actually you guys all helped me record uh, what is called a next time on, which is a little animated sizzle proof of concept. I don't know if you, Bill and Brenda, if you guys remember recording for that stuff, but like it's all fake in the sense that like, well, these are not real episodes of TV, but we've written this thing to give the impression that there's 10 episodes and we've edited this little piece for you. You know what I mean? But it's all, it's all, it's all kind of smoke and mirrors. So similar when you're writing your 10 fake episodes, um, I would say just focus on the character stuff. This is an episode where our two leads get jealous at each other. Why? Why are they, why are they in conflict? You know what I mean? Like let these premises tell the reader more about your world and your characters. Don't just let them be like, you know, this one is a uh, hot dog eating contest or whatever, you know what I mean? Cause that's while fun may not help sell your world and your characters. <laughs> um, I like this person's um, uh, screen name, a small rat holding cheese. Asked, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, how does a voice actor get directed when it comes to the script on Amphibia? And does uh, the show usually stick mostly the script or are there, is, is there some flexibility for ad living uh, when it comes to the recording sessions? Guys, tell me. <laughs> to me, um, first of all, uh, it's our voice director, Eden Regal, who like goes through and like she'll read, she'll read with us. We'll, wa we'll talk through the script or talk through the scene, at least for me, because um, I know everyone works a little bit differently. And I remember when we were actually like going into studio, like, it, you know, usually we'd have the writer of the episode there or like Matt or Jack and they throw in a bunch of alts if you're like playing with the scene or something's not quite working. Um, one thing that I really do love is that because at, at this point we do feel like, we're like this line doesn't feel like this doesn't sound like something Anne would say. We try to like reword it to get what we need to be said said, but in your own way. Um, so yeah, I feel like, and it's always fun because I feel like we really get to play in there. And if we find ways that we're like, oh my gosh, no, this is, this is, this is so wacky, but more fun. Like Matt and Jack, they're all so open to it. So at least for us, like, I feel like we just get to play in there. And Eden is so great at sort of like keeping it all like contained because like I said, I can do like 700 takes of the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree. Like, and it's also really helpful. Like whenever Eden she'll sometimes like read me into the line yeah so yeah. I can kind of like play off of her read into it and, it and it helps it like the whole thing just like flow a lot better so that's like really beneficial I think yeah it, it is since we don't have the other actors to play off of Eden fills in for that wonderfully and uh, that makes it easy and I'll, I'll usually do you know two or three takes in a row just kind of the vibe of uh how hop hop would say something and usually at least one of the lines i'll try and do it exactly as it was written to give them what they had envisioned but then if the muse hits me and i think another word might work a little bit better i'll just kind of throw it in there and if it works fine if it doesn't we've got the other one that was the way it was written and uh, that usually works out and usually so oh, that take three or we'll take sometimes even will say you know uh the first half of take one and the <laughs> Yeah. You know, take three, the second half of the sentence from take three. So a lot of times they're stitched together uh, <laughs> performances. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun. I feel like it's um, it's crazy that we get any work done because it just feels <laughs> like it's yeah. just fun. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, two hours went by and you're like, I'm done, you know? Yeah. I always give three takes. I don't know what it is, but something inside yeah. me, I yeah. always want to give three. It's like weird if I don't get three in there. No, rule of three. Yeah. Same. <laughs> I always something... throw in like one extra and like Eden will start talking. She's like, I'm sorry. I was like, I just have to do it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the best feeling when like she or we or like someone's got their hand on the mic. You know what I mean? Like we're about to say something and it's like, no, let them keep going. Like they're about to get it. Um, <laughs> and like from our point of view, you know, sometimes the lines are pretty contrived, like, and we need help. 
you know what I mean? Like it happens where like, we'll bring you guys something and you'll say it out loud. And now we've heard it out loud and we're like, yeah, no, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's not, that's not great. And so like, what's so great about like having a environment where we can be a little bit more collaborative is like, we can ask these amazing voice actors for like, well, how would you say it? How do you think the character would say it? And that it really helps smooth a lot of things over. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, more direction and voice acting question here from Michael. Uh, what kind of things do you like and dislike to see in a script in terms of direction? Uh, what advice would you give to get great performances out of the actors? When does directing yeah. become over directing? I got my notebook out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess it's a give and take kind of thing with the director. It's a relationship I have with the director. Um, sometimes I don't mind line readings and they would say never, mm -hmm. ever do a line reading. But sometimes if I'm having trouble getting, okay, what's really going on here? Cause I don't hear the other actors. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. That read in and uh, sometimes a line reading helps other times. Yeah. I'll use that as a, a crutch or a step to find, okay, I could also do it this way and get the same idea across. I completely agree because sometimes I think just as humans we have natural like you know ways of speaking and when we get into a character sometimes I literally I love doing a, what they call a scratch and match like I love scratch and matching to Matt because sometimes you just I I personally like I don't un, like I just can't get the rhythm I can't get the music or I don't I just can't quite get the cadence and so sometimes it's like really great to like just like hear it and be like oh I get it yeah. um and it's really helpful and also for me I I always say like, I, I love direction because, you know, I feel like this is such a collaborative thing. Like this is all collaborative. I may read something and see it a very specific way, but Matt may see it differently. Jack may see it differently. You know, everyone's going to read one line all differently. So it's trying to find that balance of like what works and what kind of like checks all of the boxes. Um, so for me, I love going in there and I love, I give me all of the direction. I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what is that? Uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. It's so like just collaborative and it's always like a fun feeling. It's like, it's like you can go in with an idea of something you and then when you're in there and you're actually recording it and then you get a direction, you're like, oh, oh and then it's like the light bulb goes on and then you come up with something better than like, you could have thought of yeah right yeah exactly because sometimes you could be like thinking one certain way uh mm -hmm. that the, the line sounds like this and then once eden maybe gives you a line read or something then you're like oh okay yeah that's a that's a lot better way of, of yeah. saying yeah. It. yeah or sometimes when she looks at like the storyboards and like you're like oh that's what we're doing yeah, right. it, yeah. that's what it looks like yeah. <laughs> okay when yeah we had a we had a really early discussion and this was kind of like you know, some, some productions want you guys to match the boards. You know what I mean? They really want you to pay attention to the facial expressions. Cause like so a big complaint I would get in season one for my team um, was like, well, this performance doesn't match the pictures. And I was like, no, 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 that's okay. Cause like, we'll change, we'll change the, the, the pictures to, to match the voice because I really love the take. You know what I mean? And I think that if we just had you guys matching the pictures over and over again, it, it, it would get, really difficult, I think, from my point of view. I, I really, we really wanted you for, and everyone who works on the show to have some space, you know what I mean, to craft and to play, because I think that otherwise it just all starts feeling made to order, right? And it's like, okay. Not so sure. much about the way you work specifically, Matt. I feel like you always try to find what's like, what our strengths are and play into that instead of the other way around instead of trying to fitting us into like you know the storyboard or like what everyone thinks this character should be I, at least like you know from my experience I feel like you've you figured out like what you know my strengths are for Anne and you really you guys have really written into that and so it makes my job so much easier and hopefully your guys in the same way but I know it's not always like that and so I'm so appreciative and so grateful because I know that that's you know it's not something that happens on all shows. Yeah, it's been good. It's been really good. I mean, I really, you guys is, when I get your, your records in, it really is like a warm blanket. Like they're really, you know what I mean? It's, it's very, <laughs> there's usually no issues like whatsoever. Like it's all kind of good to go. Um, yeah. I'm just curious in the record booth, do you have access to um, storyboard? Like if you need it, if it is, do they have like a, 
you know, Eden, you. Eden has it. So, yeah. so what ends up happening and actually in season one, yeah, we throw it up sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, and of course, when we're doing ADR, they've got the picture, but yeah. like, yeah, for the most part, it's their, the script and their imaginations, man. And, and, and that's, what's so admirable is like some of this stuff, I'm like, good luck. You know what I mean? Like, cause like, it's pretty abstract, especially like, you know, again, as we get further into the season, it becomes more lore heavy and it becomes more, there's more magic and there's more twists and turns. Some of that stuff relies a lot on their own vision internally. And I, I'm, I'm happy to say that it's all going super well, but I have so much uh, admiration for, for you guys able to do that. I'm very, I'm very insecure when you guys like are reading that script. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I hope you, it makes sense to you, you know? Oh my goodness, please, hold on. I'm gonna let my dog in, hold on, sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited when we get a new script. It like brings me yeah. so much joy. Like it's, <laughs> it's just so much fun to read. Like, I feel like I'm reading it silently to myself and then I'm just like, ha ha, ha like, like everybody hears me laughing out loud. That's so like, awesome. That's so great to best. hear. <laughs> oh, you have a poly shirt, I just noticed. <laughs> oh yeah, my dad got me this, it's a straw. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I've seen Nicole ask this question a couple of times. I just want to make sure we get it. For Matt, um, can you describe the creative process for balancing the world of Gravity Falls and the world of, of Amphibia in the Wax Museum episode? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm so. What a great question, and I'm so I'm so glad you asked. So, you know, a crossover, right, with Gravity Falls was something that like I always sort of wanted to do. But like I wanted to do it in a way that was respectful of both canons, and 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 what's really important about that is that like you know Gravity Falls is sort of perfect the way it is, and I, I'm not looking to mess anything up, and in fact I'm terrified of it. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, and I have such enormous respect for Alex and, and everything that he's done with that show. I wanted to make sure that I had the most non-invasive tribute possible, uh, and so kind of what we came up with was this great idea of having not Stan Pines, not Dipper and Mabel, kind of like warping in and being like, how did we get here? We gotta do something, kids. They're like, whatever, we gotta get out of here. Uh, instead, creating kind of an alternative version of Stan who was a frog and lived in the world, was a real person in the world, had a life outside the show, ran a mystery shack-esque kind of, you know, tourist trappy thing, so that when the characters interacted with him, he would feel authentic and honest to living in the world and that it would not be jarring. You know what I mean? Like I, I believe that what we what we wanted to do was create an episode that was a tribute. But if you had not seen Gravity Falls and you were watching this for the first time, you wouldn't blink. You know what uh -huh. I mean? You would just say like, "Well, that's a creepy character they met on their journey because <laughs> he fits right into the world." It's it's tricky though. You know what I mean? Like, um, I I really wanted to let the shows be themselves. You know what I mean? But while still tipping a hat to you know, this amazing character and the world and, and all that stuff. And also, you know, the writer, Geneva, she was such a big fan of Gravity Falls. She actually brought the script and was like, I want to do a wax museum. They, they, they're on their road trip and they stop at this wax museum. I was like, that sounds a lot like Gravity Falls, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think this is it. I think that this is our opportunity to springboard off of your premise into a, a loving tribute, you know what I mean, to this show. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here's a question for everyone uh, from Caroline. Uh, what happens after you have been cast as a character? Uh, what's the process coming into the amph Amphibifam, <laughs> working with the other cast, the crew, not necessarily with the directors, but any crew interaction? What happens? <laughs> what happens I mean, honestly, it's almost, like, it's almost like the same as the audition process, yeah. because for me, we I we were going to the Disney like TV animation building and we're doing our records there and it was the and it was the same it was like Matt Jack Eden the engineer and so to me it, the audition process was almost a lot like the like the recording process um, so for me it wasn't that different I mean me <laughs> I mean yeah it was for me it wasn't that different um, it's still and especially when we first started I was like still so nervous so I still felt like every session was an audition <laughs> at least for me yeah <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny the first few uh, episodes of a, uh, a a series you're still kind of finding the character mm -hmm. and locking it in so you rely more on the directors, especially in the beginning, until you know the character. And once you do, 
then that character can almost say anything and it feels right. But there's a lot more, am I doing it right? Am I doing it? Is this what you wanted? And I remember uh, going back in, I would forget what I did for Hot Pop and I'll always say, can you play what I did last time? So like, okay, that voice, okay, now I got it. And it just kind of locks it in for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I have like a recording of my audition on my phone and like, right, I would sit outside of the studio and right before going in, I listened to it like three times and I'm like, ah, okay, okay, I got it. And then, <laughs> then you go in and you make cartoons and it's so fun. <laughs> Could you imagine if I was like listening to myself, just talking like myself now to go in, like, okay, prep yourself, Brenda. Get yourself ready to listen to yourself. <laughs> yeah, it was it was all a lot similar for me. I mean, um, it, it but it was pretty smooth, like transitioning, like like Brenda said, it was very similar from audition to actually working. Uh, you know, we were working with the same people and so it was very similar, but also like Bill said, it, you were still in those first couple of sessions, you're still like locking the, that character in. So like sometimes you might like get a little bit out of character and you have to go back uh, up to your, you know, sprig voice or something like that. So, yeah. but, but yeah, for the most part, it's a very smooth process. Yeah. And you guys, like all four of you, like, you know, uh, you won't get a credit for this, but you like helped write the characters a little bit. You know what I mean? Like all the, all the writers were like at some point given your voice to listen to and it makes such a big difference for them to write to your voice and then I think that's that's where we kind of hit our sweet spot is that like you know you get about 10 half hours in and now your voices are feeding the writing mm -hmm. and so then and then those performances are easier to do because they've been written with you in mind so it is really this nice kind of it does it does take a little bit of ramp up though and I, I'm so glad you mentioned that Bill the idea that like okay we're, we're trying to be consistent with this character and it takes a few episodes to do that. I'm um, uh, seeing questions that are all that are all hitting right what you're talking about here. Um, from Wyatt, uh, for any of the actors, how do you get to cement a character's voice in you? That seems like a tricky thing to tune into and get um, accurately every time, like it's a natural way of speaking. So I guess, like you said about, you know, 10 and a half hours or, <laughs> or uh, you know, the first few episodes at least, kind of uh, yeah, you just, just to cement the character. Yeah. yeah. I kind of try to like identify where I feel it coming from. Like, like when you do a voice or something, I'm like, I'm like, okay, is it coming from my throat? Is it coming more from my nose? Is it coming from the side of my cheeks? And it's like, if I'm not feeling that sensation, I'm like, okay, something's off. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, uh, Christina asks, any memorable moments while voice acting in the studio? Any funny stories? <laughs> um, for for us, it's and it's crazy too because like it's been so many years working together and like I've, I've accrued so many different kind of like experiences with you guys like I would really need to rack my brain to kind of like oh yeah I remember that and remember this and remember that I mean it's been really like you know I remember very early on we needed a bank of laughs from each of you sort of just like <laughs> oh. laughs and like you would not believe how hard it is to just get a genuine laugh you know what I mean something that doesn't feel too hyper real or too cartoony. And I remember vividly getting those from you guys and being like, it's <laughs> it's C and F and we use them all the time. You know what I mean? Like in the show, cause like, it's a tricky thing. There's like a, there's, there's a very fine line between like, ah, it's a little too much. You know what I mean? Or like, oh, it's just <laughs> right. You know, like, but yeah, like, I mean, I remember, I don't remember whose audition it was, but like, you know, I'm trying to seem cool. You know what I mean? Like, and then like, I know what I'm doing. But I do remember somebody once read a line that was so funny that I, sp I spat my drink out. And I just remember, I just remember thinking like, God, I hope they didn't see that. They would think I was such a, like, you know, a beginner, like laughing at, laughing at a read. Huh, imagine, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> this is just for fun, but can I get an in-character laugh from each, each voice actor? <laughs> <laughs> just well, the, you guys have been hearing me do laughing. that all day. Sadly, I don't really count because for me, I feel like it's just me laughing. <laughs> there you go. There's Ann. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Hot Pop's a little bit, you know, a little bit pinched. <laughs> He's got kind of a devilish little. <laughs> and then uh, his other quote was, I say what? You know, and he's going <laughs> that. So those are a couple of little things. Yes. Spriggs is kind of uh it's it's kind of like a belly laugh all the time like it's always like 
like it, it's kind of like up and down up and down and it's coming from the belly so <laughs> he's got a fun laugh <laughs> polly's got like two different little laughs one is like her like like her little mischievous one where she's like <laughs> and then the other one is like more boisterous where she's like <laughs> so those are the two <laughs> i love it the only the only laugh that Anne has that like we like had to make up was one that i stole from my brother which is the <laughs> that one yeah. it's my little brother it's like it's, it's one of my favorite things is like having to like jump in and go like what would this person do um but yeah god i love your laugh so much amanda oh thank you <laughs> one of my favorite characters it like, yeah. it, like sparks so much joy for me I love how they had the um, the the girl episode where like the they girls day shopping. My favorite. So fun. <laughs> Actually, that um, you guys have two team ups. There's one that's the Lost in Utopia that is like one of my absolute favorites because yes. like there's this part where you guys chant like tales, right? Do you remember like yes! tales, tales? Yes! Like I just Tail. it's just the Tail. funniest, <laughs> insane. <laughs> Um, I like this question from Carlos. What does Anne want to be when she grows up? Yeah, oh, goodness. That's a great one. That's a spoiler. Oh, okay. I know. <laughs> True. That's a spoiler. Sorry. That, like, how much of Anne will like, <laughs> want to like, all of a sudden like, be a scientist or something? Because I can't answer it. that. I know. Exactly. <laughs> I want to know, Matt. What does, hey, what does Anne want to be when she grows up? A voice actress. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> <laughs> Not for cartoons, for documentaries. <laughs> like a Werner Herzog thing, or no, what? Like document, yeah, documentary voice. <laughs> That's so specific. <laughs> um, Pasha asks. I mean, if you can't answer this, that's fine. Uh, what were the other two pitches that weren't amphibia? Oh yeah, I can tell you because like uh, <laughs> this, this <laughs> they ain't going nowhere. Um, one of them was like you know, like a Power Rangers thing. Like it was very like a Power Rangers-esque kind of spoof. And I remember like, as I went in with it, the movie Big Hero 6 was announced like the same week. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> but I still went in and I did the pitch and I did my best. But I just, I remember they were like, oh, you know, we have like a movie coming out. I was like, yeah, 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 it's cool. <laughs> but, and that happens, so by the way, that happens so much, right guys? Where like, you're like, I have a great idea. And then like, see the billboard, yep. Anna Kendrick's on it or whatever. You're like, there it is. <laughs> awesome. Oh, there's my idea. <laughs> um, and then, the second one was like a more of a Star Trek thing. Uh, it was, I think it was like about like interns on a, on a enterprise like thing. And then it's so funny cause we have lower decks now, which I'm like, oh, oh yeah. that's like, that's, that's very much to the tune of what I was thinking, which is like, can you combine the kind of humdrum of being a temp or being, you know, daily call or an intern into a, like a, a high octane sci-fi situation. So like, I, I'm happy to see that like that kind of show got made and is great and that there's a market for it. But yeah, those were the two ideas. Um, mm. you can have them because they didn't get much track. <laughs> <laughs> um, also on the subject of other pitches, Rick asks, um, do execs have to approach you to pitch a show? Does it help to know an exec? Um, well, I assume because you worked at TVA, so did you approach them or? So, so, and I mean, even Nico, you know this too. It's just like, I mean, like if you're high profile enough where they're like, I really, oh, I really want to pitch from you. Like, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like you're probably pretty big already. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like for, for someone who's like never run a show before, like you absolutely will be hustling and reaching out to people and, Hey, can I'd love to pitch something to you sometime? And they'll be like, yeah, absolutely. Like, let's get coffee. And like, you'll have those awkward, that great transition from like a casual coffee into like a pitch where you're mm -hmm. like, so you know what I mean, <laughs> or whatever, like it is super, super common. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know, I mean, it is it is good to know. It is good to know people, but I will say this. And actually, I gave a talk once at, at CalArts and like someone asked a question that just, it just like broke my brain. Like, cause I just, I didn't really know how to answer it. They said like, do you attribute your success to the contacts you had? And I was like, well, yes, but no, you know what I mean? Like, no, but yes, and like, <laughs> yes, of course. But like, no, no, you know what I mean? Like, it's this weird kind of balance of like, look, as you work at a place, at a studio, you get to know the people around you. You know what I mean? You've installed yourself at a company. You get to know this person from casting. You get to know this person from development. And if you have a good relationship with that person from development, who knows? One day they might be like, hey, you're a director, right? Do you want to like 
come take a look at a pilot that we're working on. And that's like exactly what happened with me. It was like the first thing I did in development wasn't mine. Someone had a project that needed a director and they're like, hey, I know Matt sort of, you wanna like come up and like look at this thing. And I started working with them. And then I got to know even more people at development. And then eventually I got the confidence to, to kind of like start bringing my own pitches to them. So it's like, it's, it's like a, um, what do you call that? Catch 22, a little bit, right? It's right. like, you gotta make those contacts to get those pitches or get those pitches kind of like on the books and stuff. But like, you, you need to like put in work to, to start meeting people and, and, and getting that going. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like there's a magic bullet that is like suddenly gonna get you all these meetings and stuff. Gotcha, yeah. <laughs> um, anonymous, oh, and this was mentioned earlier um, that they're asking to cl clarify a bit, I guess. Uh, when deciding on voices for your characters, so the higher ups weigh in um, with some actors or are you completely free to choose from the submissions? So you mentioned like the higher ups kind of have a say in, in yeah. e even if you pick even if you have a choice on who you want. Yeah, it's, it's you know, these four, intense scrutiny because they're the four core characters of the show. Do you know what I mean? So uh, other guest stars and, and minor characters that pop in and out of the universe, less scrutiny, less scrutiny because there's, there's sort of less stakes. But with sure. something like, you know, the core four characters, the real engine of your show. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of scrutiny. <laughs> um... As well there should be. Sort of, you know what I mean? Like, I, it's not, that's not a dig or anything. I think, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, from Michael, were you ever worried you'd run out of jokes or storylines to tell in this world? <laughs> <laughs> How have you managed to avoid um, cornering the storytelling for Amphibia? Um, well, that assumes that we haven't run out of jokes. That's you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's twofold. One is that like, you know, you can feel it when we're doing the same storyline over and over again, if we're doing the same jokes over and over again. And, and then and then it's just, it's a good time to have a meeting and, and discuss, you know, okay, it's starting to feel a little bit samey. Like, how can we mix it up? And we've had those meetings, you know what I mean? Like, I, I have an incredibly wonderful writing team that, that you know, we all work together. And sometimes it's time to, to come together and, and tackle some of these things together. I think in the Newtopia stuff, there were like, there was a period where I was like, oh, okay, some of these city stories, they're all feeling a little samey. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know why, I don't know what that is. So we all got together and we discussed it and we found a way to kind of break them up and make them each feel special. You know, one was a film noir homage, like one was kind of a college thing where Sprig goes to school. One was kind of, you know, a crazy, you know, uh, girls going on like an escapade in the city that it, it, we just worked hard to make them feel separate. But you know, at, what, at one time they, they did all kind of run together. And then you kind of just, you, you need to kind of not pull the alarm, but you need to notice and kind of get everyone together and be like, hey, let's figure this out. I think one of the things that helps me is that I've hired people who are infinitely smarter than me, infinitely funnier than me. You know what I mean? Like these actors are so funny. Jack is so funny. The writing team is so funny. The, the, the board artists are so funny that like, I don't have to be on all the time. And then what's really nice is that at the very end of the process, I can come back around and like add a few more jokes here and there. So it's all iterative. If that makes sense. Yeah. Cool, that, cool. Hey, that's the trick. Hire people a hundred times more talented than you. I, amen. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, question for Justin, Bill, Brenda, and Amanda from Floor. Uh, do you feel like the character while you are acting? <laughs> I think I know what they're asking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. You channel the character within you when you are acting as them absolutely yeah. yeah yes yeah i think so definitely because like especially like like i was saying before like i'm as you know regularly i'm not like super hyper but whenever i get into the script and and i'm becoming sprig all of a sudden i'm like super hyper i have all this energy i'm funny you know all this stuff <laughs> but it's not exactly what i'm like all the time but once i'm able to get into the character you know that's <laughs> That's what Imagine happens. being like that all the time, <laughs> that would be constantly on and <laughs> hyperactive. <laughs> uh, from JC, when casting, uh, were you specifically looking for a Thai American voice actress for Anne? I have a really funny story about that, which is that, so actually this, and it's, you know, it's a great thing. Uh, casting was very committed to, I don't remember the word for it, but it was appropriate casting or it was it was correct casting or just 
really making an effort to make sure that the the voice behind the character matched, you know, ethnically who the character was. And so when when I was reading for Anne, um, I think I got I, I received mostly Asian American actors, um, and that was great. Um, and it, it it wasn't as specific. And I remember they they you know went to me and they gauged my comfort too because you know. I am half Thai and they were like, do they all need to be Thai? And I was like, no, 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 you, you, it's okay. It's, you know what I mean? Like broadly, as long as we're in the ballpark, I'm, I'm very comfortable with it. But when Brandon was auditioning, I remember someone leaned over to me and the, by the way, killing it. Just like, I was like, this so is so kind. great. So charming. Like, you know what I mean? Someone leaned in and was like, she's also half Thai. And I was like, don't you say another word. Like, <laughs> like don't tell me anything. Like, just let me, you know what I mean? Like, just let me like gauge this. And like, cause I was really like feeling it and vibing with it. Um, but like, you know, so it was something that was always the hope and always the dream. You don't always get like one-to-one, -one, but in this case, I'm, I'm so pleased that we were able to. <laughs> I think it's really awesome. <laughs> Great. Crazy. Cool. cool. <laughs> uh, from a question here from Grace. Um, I noticed that some shows have roles that others don't. For example, Amphibia has a supervising director and Gravity Falls has a creative director. I've seen shows that don't have either. Uh, what determines whether or not roles like those are included? What in the production calls for the inclusion of extra roles like that? That is a great question. Um, so every show, and this is so crazy, every show is different. Every show has different needs. Every show starts from a very different place. You typically see a creative director, director or a supervising producer on a show that it's the first time this person is show running. Um, that's very common on Gravity Falls. It was Robert Zetti who created My Life as a Teenage Robot. Awesome, brilliant guy. Um, and he was the supervising director. My supervising director was uh, Kim Roberson, who is also fantastic. And I think those positions, like they really are there to be your Sherpa. Do you know what I mean? Like they're there to help you with a crazy job, a crazy process that no one in their right of mind should ever be doing, honestly. And that's that's sort of why those positions are there. So like if you see a show that doesn't have that, I don't know, maybe it was a showrunner who didn't need it or or you know, they're somewhere else in their career. But I know for me and I know for Gravity Falls, it was a very, it was a very specific, you know, need that these these folks were filling. And I'm I'm so grateful that they were that they were there. Fantastic. I love Kim, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, Kim's incredible. And also just like, you know, creative producer, creative director, like these are just like, they're just words, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Anonymous for Brenda, uh, what's oh. the difference between voice acting and live action acting? Do you prefer one over the other? Um, I mean, I feel like this is such like an old trope, but like the best thing about voice acting is especially now, literally going to work in my pajamas. Um, <laughs> but also I think it's, um, it's different in the sense that we get to do so much more crazy things in a short amount of time. Um, I'll, I'll get to play characters and do things that I'll never get to do in live action in animation. Um, and so that's really fun. But I do think that they're very much like voice, voice acting and live action. It's, all acting. Um, mm -hmm. And so when people say like, oh, well, that's just a voice actor. I was like, no, he's an actor. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You have to have the, that set of skill. Otherwise it's not gonna like translate. Um, and voice acting is very, for me, it's, um, it's been such a learning curve. It's so difficult to be able to control your voice and to emote and to be able to tell a story without seeing your face at all. Um, it's a challenge. And so I think they're, they're, they're very much the same, but also very different because you have to really work on specific set of skills to really sell whatever, or to sell the character that you're playing. Um, so yeah, I think they're, they're, they're the same in a sense where you're acting, but you just have to work on like minute different things to really be able to, to uh, sell whatever character that you're playing. Um, but yeah, no, I love voice acting. It's so much fun. But also I always say I'm so... Um, uh, I'm I'm so lucky, and I feel like I, I I like I cheated because this is my first like real like voiceover like job, and I have so much fun. Um, I love Anne so much, and I love working with this group of people. <laughs> so I feel like I have it so easy, and I'm so lucky. So like I'm like I was like I always feel bad like when I talk about my experiences because mine has been so wonderful. Um, so yeah. Matt, you've made this wonderful for me. Thanks for being such a good boss. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear it. I mean, <laughs> it, it seems like, you know, I had kind of a, a, a shock when like, you know, sometimes you'll bring someone in and they're an amazing actor, but not like a great voice actor. And it, it, it's a weird kind of like yeah. voice acting a lot. They got to be so up here and like a hyper real version of themselves. 
sometimes like the nuance doesn't, it doesn't quite play, right? Yeah. It's, it's just a different set of like motor skills almost, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Amanda, did you want to chime in on that stuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. It's um, voice acting, you're right. It's like, you have to be able to see it with just your voice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And everything, yeah, is like very much up here. And then when like, you know, you go back on screen or something, you have to like push it and condense it all in here. Yeah. So, but, but it is the same. Yeah. It's like all the rules are the same. You're still acting. You still have to feel all these emotions and everything. Um, they're just coming. You're right. Just from a different place. If that yeah. makes any sense. It's like a different yeah. way of expressing it. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I always heard the, uh, that uh, a camera adds 10 pounds. A microphone, <laughs> a microphone sucks out about 10% of the energy. So you have to goose it. Oh, that no, to I like right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Goose it to hit that right note. <laughs> and it's um, also really fun too, because sometimes, you know, you can play a baby, you can play like a 60 year old woman, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you could play so many different things that you never thought that you would ever be able to you know yeah. and then on camera you're just kind of like this is me this is who i am <laughs> <laughs> it's not sound like a letdown but you know you're hey, like hey 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 like, with, yeah. a, with <laughs> enough uh pro prosthesis anything is possible so anything can yes <laughs> <laughs> the doors are much wider open when it comes to uh voice acting um time as always just flies by we have like 10 or 15 minutes left um, I'll try to maybe wrap it. I want to try to ask everybody's questions. Um, uh, from Evan, how interactive are the voice actors with the storyboard artists? In my experience, not very much. No. But, no. Yeah, so unfortunately, in this, in our case, not not very much. I think that uh, there are shows where, you know, the board artists, they do attend or the directors, they do attend. I, I kind of embraced a philosophy with, a, with this show, for better or for worse, that like, everyone needs to be doing sort of their best work, like where they are sort of like in what they're doing in, in retrospect, like, you know, uh, I would love to get some of them in the booth just to at least get to meet and experience the process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from Kiernan, Kieran, sorry. Hi, Matt. I have ideas for animated shows. I'd like to pitch. What did you have to make for your amphibia pitch? Um, um it's for a pitch, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like a, probably a 12 or 13, 14 page pitch Bible that again, the, the question about high concept versus low concept, I, I think start broad, you know what I mean? And, and sort of take it around and see if you can get some traction. But again, I will say it a hundred times, like it's really important, I think, to try to install yourself at a studio and really understand how the, how the business works, how the industry works before you just kind of like dive into it and make a show yeah. because yeah. like, let, let's say, let's say that you, you get the show, right? Like you did it. You're the one in a million. You had a little PDF and people love it, but you don't know how to make a show because you've never done that before. So I think that when you do become like the dog that caught the car, <laughs> um, you want to be prepared to like do it justice and to make the best possible show. So I highly encourage anyone to kind of work and at least understand the pipeline a bit, work with actors, you know what I mean? Record some stuff like, do some animatics, like learn as much as you can before you embark on this journey. Work on other people's stuff before your own. I think so. I think so. I mean, you I can do the, the you can, yeah. you can win the lotto though. It happens like you can be. And that's the thing too, that I think is so attractive is like, you can absolutely, that could be you, but it's like, do you want it to be you? I don't know. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Work on other people's stuff before, uh, and then, you know, obviously if you're working at a studio first, uh, you, it kind of gives you an advantage if you pitch rather than just coming right out, right off the street and pitching. <laughs> um, from Matthew, um, if you need a minute to think about this, don't worry. Uh, were there any jokes or scenes or stuff that had to be changed or removed at the last second from certain episodes? Yeah, there are countless, there are countless jokes and scenes that don't make it because like we're an 11 minute show, you know what I mean? And like, we have so many ideas and, and, and even the actors, they bring so much to the table. There's this amazing joke from Handy Ann, one of our first episodes where the vegetables come to life and they start, you know, eating folks or whatever. And like a, a, an ear of corn comes to life and it eats a crow. And Brenda has this amazing take where she's just like, oh, that looked personal or whatever. And I, I love that joke so much. It got so far that it was animated. 
Do you know what I mean? Like I paid for that joke, man. You know what I mean? Like, and then, you know, it all comes down to time and we, we needed it. And so we, we had to cut the joke. There's, there's lots of stuff like that, that like, you know, it's left on the cutting room floor and it was great by itself, but for whatever reason, it didn't gel with the piece happens Mm. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from Jacob, how was it having your mom voice a character on the show? <laughs> your mom's it's, the best, by the way. She's yeah. thank you. She's so she's doing good. Um, so so uh having her on the show has been great. Um uh I'm trying to think of how to like okay, so <laughs> she's not a voice actor. No, 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 no. She's also, you know, um 70. And I want to be respectful of that. And so sometimes like when I would record her, I would feel like a bad son. Cause I'm like, okay, two hours, here we go, mom. You know what I mean? Like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. But like my number one memory of this entire process. And by the way, like she really likes it. She just likes being there. She's like, I get to be part of Matt's thing. You know what I mean? Like that's sort of where, where her head is at. But my number one memory is, is she's coming in to read a script, right? It's the first time she's never read this character before, Anne's mom. And she's going through the script and, and we're walking to the, to the recording booth. And she turns to me and she says, now, am I a kind mom or am I a strict mom? And I was like, oh, mom, yeah, you're both, you know? Like, it's, it's all good. And then I was like, oh, you're talking about the character. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and I, I, don't think she, I don't think she picked up on it, but I was just like, oh yeah, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, you know what I mean? Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> but she's been great. She's been great to work with. She has a lot of, so English is her second language. Tongue twisters, man. Really uh, difficult, really difficult. <laughs> I think I've just been notified that there's 60 questions I haven't even gotten yet. So we're definitely not getting to everybody. I'm so sorry. Um, but um, I'll finish off what I've been sent uh, so far here. Um, uh, Chad asks, can we ever get a musical episode? I don't know if you mentioned that that would be a spoiler or... Yeah, I don't know, Chad. <laughs> I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Carl's asks, um, for Matt and Brenda, what's your favorite Thai food? Brenda? Ooh, uh, papaya salad. Nice. Yeah. Papaya salad and sticky rice. Dude, that's, you like it super spicy? Super spicy. Yeah. Amazing. How about you? Um, uh, my favorite is, uh, it's like a, you know, it's so funny. Um, I guess they, they call it like, it's drunk food. It's like, oh, it's perfect when you're like drunk or like, you know what I mean? Or, or whatever, or hungover because it's got so much grease in it. So my favorite is like, it's, it's a Thai omelet, okay? It, we call it a, a kai, kai jio. And like, it's just the most amazing thing. So if you've, you've never had a Thai omelet and not every restaurant has it, yeah. but like they make it with so much oil and so much kind of like, you know, uh, fish sauce and stuff that like, Ooh. it is so amazing and fluffy and golden and perfect. It's, it's a dream come true. So I highly recommend if you can find a restaurant that makes a Thai omelet, go for it, get it. It's amazing. And that's, it's one of those things that like everyone in Thailand, very miss, you know what I mean? Like they love it. So it's just like, if you can find a place. And again, I I haven't seen a bunch. There's one in LA, Palm Thai, actually, you know, they do it. They're amazing. So good. They make a Thai omelet. They also sell uh, frogs. (laughs) And oh, this is so, this is so weird. Uh, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, but like, uh, the, I, I'll, I'll tell you. So basically, um, uh, uh, season one, I took all the board artists there and I was like, you have to eat this. <laughs> like, I was like, it was like kind of a weird ritual, you know? I was like, you must consume the flesh to truly understand. Anyway, oh that's God. TMI. <laughs> you must consume it to truly make a cartoon about it. <laughs> you, you will not know until. <laughs> I think I have picked a good last two or three questions here. Anonymous asked, and it's cool if you can't talk about it. What other projects is everyone working on? <laughs> I mean, you guys, you guys, I'd love to hear what you guys are, are doing yeah. these days. Um, I record trolls. Uh, the you do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I play, uh, no, no, it's okay. Um, I play a, a Poppy. I get Polly and Poppy mixed up sometimes. I'm like, wait a minute, who am I? Um, yeah, and now we're on uh, Peacock and uh, Hulu. We were over on Netflix, so but we're still doing that. And then uh, This Is Us. Every once in a while, I come in and I play young Sophie. And then, then this. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bill, you start, because I know about... <laughs> 
Well, uh, obviously, with uh, uh, Disney's keeping me busy with Goofy, we have, uh, you know, Mickey's Fun House and about three others that and uh, that uh, we're doing right now. I, I'm doing a new DreamWorks show that I haven't even done the first episode for, and I can't talk about that. Um, you tease. I have, I, have, <laughs> I have a live action show that uh, I actually sold on for on the. Uh, a Disney Plus called It's a Dog's Life with Farmer, and um, we're pitching new things to Disney. So hopefully, you know, I'm, cool. I'm working on pitching stuff. I need to talk with you more. About <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, are you kidding me, Bill? You're you're the most charming person. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, just uh, there. I'm I'm thank God I'm still working. You know. Keep them busy. That's great. Yeah, people that's always ask, me, are you ever going to retire? And I said, why? <laughs> yeah. I never give this up. Um, well, besides doing this, this show, I'm doing a new Netflix show called Blue Eyed Samurai, which is really fun. Very different from this show. And we also work with Out Loud. It's always so funny when the engineers will have like back like sessions, like they're like close together and they'll be like very different shows. And it's really fun. I'm doing a stint on The Proud Family, which is really cool because they're coming back to Disney Plus. And that's been so fun because I loved that show growing up. And then this summer, we're going to go back and shoot a uh, season two of Dollface, uh, the show that I'm on with Kat Dennings and Shay Mitchell on Hulu. So, um, yeah, that'll be fun. Trying to keep busy. Dude, Brenda, when I saw you were doing Blue Eyed Samurai in the presser, I was like, I got like FOMO. I was like, I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so different. And actually, like, I, it's really fun because I get to like do something from like way back when. So really working with a, like a dialect coach and stuff oh, like cool, that. It's been man. really fun. Super, super different. Um, very different from Amphibia. Like, uh, we were, I was working with Kyle, the engineer from Out Loud, literally the day before doing Blue Eyed. And he was laughing. He's like, it's just so bizarre because we've done, we've been doing, amphibia for three four years and he's like so different i was like i know kyle so it'll be really fun it's a really cool very different show um so i'm excited awesome yeah and then um i've just been we just wrapped up um boss baby back in business so that was a lot of fun recording um i've got two uh video games that i can't talk about yet but i was really excited about that because i've never gotten on video games before so once I was finally able to do that, I was like, ah, oh, yes, I've been wanting to break into that. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, and then a little while ago, I was working on a Nickelodeon show that I can't talk about either. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, it's always tough. It's like, I'm doing so much cool stuff. Can't talk about any of it, though. I think, I think people are so excited, though, just to hear you go like, stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you're good. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, I got two more here. Uh, um, Matt, and I'll just ask everyone, do, uh, you know, what are your inspirations for what you do in creating Amphibia? Um, when it comes to like animation inspirations, like I'm just such a huge like Ghibli fan. I just, I love like Spirited Away is like my nightlight. You know what I mean? Like anytime where I'm like, why am I in this business? You know what I mean? Like I just put that movie on and I'm like, guess why? Yeah. I love that film. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in terms of like inspiration, some of the other questions got to this, but like just really pull from your life. I think people are going to be so fascinated about you and the story that you need to tell. And it's just all coming, if it's coming from a real place and real experiences you had, like that's, that'll be just the most interesting for people. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Anyone uh, take any inspirations from, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the voice that you ended up doing for your character or you always take uh, inspirations from the other actors that you uh, work with and play off of them. And it brings you up to their level, I think. Uh, I, and I got to say, just, I love Amphibia. It is just a joy. I watch it all the time. Usually one or two episodes, you know, well, I watched one last night. So, you know, oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can stream them on Disney Plus, big, no. big plug for them. And uh, so I'm just look, uh, looking forward to the new season. Great. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, one more question, but I want to apologize to everyone if you didn't get your question asked. Uh, we got uh, easily the most questions I've ever gotten on the show. So um, we only have so much time. Um, but uh, thanks for hanging in there. And 
Uh, Diana asks, I like this for last. What's your favorite thing about your job? Gosh. Uh, for me, it's the people that um, I get to work with and I get to like jump on the like Zoom with every week or see every week. Um, they've made this process so enjoyable and like getting to work with these guys, it's so inspiring. I'm learning so much. I'm having a good time. Um, I'm really proud of the show that we make and have a good time doing it. It's like, what else can you ask for? You know, it's like truly living the dream. It sounds so cheesy, but like <laughs> for me, it's all I can ask for. Yeah. I mean, working with all of you guys, it's just amazing. And it's such a blessing. And this is something that I'm going to remember forever that I'm going to be able to like tell my grandkids, I'm going to be like, I worked with <laughs> and, 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 and you know, it's just, it's just such a joy. Like we get to come into work and make cartoons. It's something that we love doing and it's just, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. It's a very difficult job in that it's extremely competitive. There's what about 150,000 SAG members in LA alone. They all want these jobs. So it's very competitive, but when it works, it's just pure joy and it's so much fun. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And the people that you meet, you know, whenever you're working on shows, you meet the most amazing and most creative people. And it's just so great to make those connections and to just do what you love to do. Cause I wouldn't want to be doing anything, anything other than, than what I do now. So. <laughs> great. Did you, um, anyone have uh, any social media or anything they want to plug in case anyone's not, uh, you know, looking to follow you or on anything here? <laughs> well, at, at Goofy Bill on Instagram, and I'm not much of a, a social media person. My I right. give it my, my phone to my son. He's young, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it helps me out. But uh, <laughs> my, my Instagram is just my name, Justin Felwinger, and cool. I usually just post like VO stuff on there and other things that I do. So yeah, <laughs> mine's a uh, real Amanda Lee on uh, Instagram. And then Twitter, it's different. It's Mandy Pandy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm boring. Mine's just all at Brenda Song, but I'm also terrible at social media and Twitter and things. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. I never post. <laughs> I, I, I definitely like follow Justin on Instagram. Justin and I was like, I think Justin's really into fishing. You know what I mean? I was just like <laughs> looking at your stuff and I was like, I think he's like serious. About it. These are like some awesome like He's really fishing, you know what oh. I mean? <laughs> I was very Stock jealous Justin. though. Stock Justin. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I, I want to just plug the show. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's coming back on 9.30 this Saturday. It's going to be on Disney Channel. You know what I mean? We're going to we're gonna do the whole rest of the second season. We're so excited about the crazy episodes that are coming up. Um, it'll go up onto Disney Plus, hopefully not long after the season finale of season two. And then you can all check it out there. But honestly, like the most important and the most rewarding thing for us is like, we love seeing your feedback. We love reading fan stuff. We love looking at fan art. We love seeing en engagement. Like it, it gives us life. Like you guys don't have any idea how much it means to us just to read your thoughts. Like just the little yeah. things, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Um, this is the last episode of season two of the show, I guess. So thank you all for being here for it. I'm gonna take about a month break and then we're gonna be back with, with more in, uh, what is it? April 14th. Um, yeah, uh, and thank you, like thank that. you, Nico, for having us. Hey, thank yeah. you for having you us. You were so yeah. amazing, <laughs> such a cool guy. Um, um, can you guys say goodbye in your voices? Are you comfortable doing that? Is that weird for you? I am. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. You ready? Three, two, one. Bye. Bye. Great meeting you, and I'm glad you joined us. Thanks so much. <laughs>